Hey YouTubers, it's me, Lonnie Clark, Nuts for Art. I'm going to continue reading this uh, paper, Human Radiation Studies, Remembering the Early Years, Oral History of Dr. John W. Goffman, MD, PhD. I'm going to read the previous paragraph. Uh, it's actually the previous two paragraphs, uh, so we can remember exactly how much we were spitting nails the last time we read this. So you're talking about a few human radiation experiments that were done in the 1940s when experiments that would make your hair stand on end were already completed in the 1920s. Not only a few people, not on 18 people with plutonium, but 2,000 children who were not even out of the nursery. Let me turn the sound up. The only thing that you had to do to get treated with radiation was to be born alive. They didn't treat you if you were born dead. If you were born alive, you got treated. Mosher at the Massachusetts General Hospital, that's like the Mecca in medicine. I've already talked to you about Letty at the Mayo Clinic. In 1925, Mosher, oh, okay, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to, I skipped a line. Letty at the Mayo Clinic is pretty hot stuff, and Massachusetts General is the Mecca of medicine. In 1925, Mosher talked about the kids that had to have tonsillectomy and adenoidectomy, and adenoidectomy. I'm sorry about that. Every one of those kids who came to the Massachusetts General or the Massachusetts Eye and Ear Infirmary for possible surgery of their tonsils had their thymus studied. No operations were done if the thymus was enlarged. They then had to get two to four hundred rads to, uh, to their thymus. Two to four hundred rads. He reported that five thousand children proudly announcing that they hadn't had any of them die under anesthesia. <clears throat> they didn't die under anesthesia, but they probably did die of radioactive contamination five or six years later. So this became the range in medicine for something like 45 to 50 years. The atomic era was near the end of that. They were pretty much over by 1960. In fact, in 1948, just after I'd been at USC Med Center, the pathology professor, one of them, Jim Reinhardt, and Jess Carr, Jess Carr, the coroner of San Francisco, and professor of pathology, wrote an indignant paper in the Archives of Pediatrics in 1948, scathingly criticizing people who had said this thymus enlargement was a myth. I know. I see these autopsies. I'm a coroner, he wrote. He used to lecture in pathology. Here was this thing that went on for 50 years. This business of human experimentation in the 40s and 50s. Forget it. The big period of human experimentation in the 10s, 20s, and 30s. The human experiment after the 1940s couldn't compare. Wow. Do you need to hear that again? Here's the thing that went on for 50 years. This business of human experimentation in the 40s and 50s, forget it. The big period of human experimentation was in the 10s, 20s, and 30s. The experimentation after 1940 couldn't compare. Now, why did I get interested in that in particular? Because, in fact, in irritating these thymuses, they couldn't keep from irritating breasts. And these kids are developing breast cancer now. Breast cancer, if you want to know the real story, it's not a disorder in which you should look for what happened to you two years ago. If you want to know about breast cancer, look back 10, 20, 30, 40, and possibly 50 years ago or more, because it's proved beyond a doubt that those people who got irradiated then 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years later show up with clinical breast cancer. The most sensitive infants are irradiated in utero. 
Now, I don't know, but I'll bet between you and the Mayo Clinic, New York University, and the dermatologists throughout this country. They were the biggest users of x-rays in radium. Now, let me put this in the vernacular. There is not any disease that they didn't treat. None. Eczema, psoriasis, lichen planus, warts, boils, carbuncles. Interestingly enough, they really thought they were getting good results. On this thymus thing, I can show you paper after paper. Quote, I treated 5,000 of these children with a 90% sex success rate. Unquote. I can show you famous people saying, quote, if you don't get a result from treating thymus, you've got the wrong diagnosis because all of the cases I treat respond. Unquote. Yes, all this appeared later. So the dermatologists were going crazy. George McKee, the professor of dermatology in 1921, said that the most valuable agent in dermatology for the treatment of for for treatment is radium and X-ray. We're successfully treating 82 separate diseases with X-rays and radium. How many of those people do you think gave him formal consent? You got 82 different diseases. You think they didn't know about these? As manna from heaven, they had to experiment on people. They write up on papers on thousands of patients. 82 different diseases treated by dermatologists. My brother-in-law, Jim McKinley, was the head of dermatology at Kaiser San Francisco. He just retired. You'll see his name on some of the publications. Some of the publications we did on heart disease work. Hold on. He got some of the special people with lesions, like heart lesions, but lesions are out on their skin called, oh gosh, xanthomatosis, X-A-N-T-H-O-M-A-T-O-S-I-S. -S. He said the last people at Kaiser, about 1960, put away their x-ray machines, but until 1960 they were treating people with x-rays regularly. There isn't a disease they didn't try. Can you imagine asthma? A thousand patients at the Mayo Clinic treated for asthma. At Mass General, 5,000 checked for an enlarged thymus. That's where it all started. And what happened in the human experimentation period? These people who treated all these patients with the cardinal mistake in radiology. What was their cardinal mistake? I don't look at them and fault them individually for anything they did. I don't fault Eugene Lenny. I don't fault Eugene Letty for treating a thousand patients with radiation. I might, in Letty's shoes at the time, have done exactly the same thing. But the cardinal mistake, and it's being made today, by the way, but for a more malignant reason today, was made. People thought that if harm was to be seen from a new agent, you surely ought to see it in 30 or 60 or 90 days. A year was like an eternity. The entire radiation community's thinking was massive doses. Radiologists were losing fingers. Radiologists were developing cancer of the skin and dying of it. They refer to them in the journals as the pioneers who gave their life for their technology. Big dose. Nobody argued about it. But 200 to 400 rads, which today we think of as mountainous, big doses that they didn't think were harmful for a crazy reason. They didn't have very good ways for measuring radiation at the time. So they used what they called the Erythema Skin Test. E-R-Y-T-H-E-M-A, Erythema. If you take an area of the skin and irradiate it with x-rays, keep increasing the milli milliamps at the time with an x-ray beam on. 
Then finally, you'll get a situation where week, where a week after the radiation, you see a reddening of the skin called erythema. E r y t h e m a. Erythema. I think erythema. Erythema. That's the medical term for reddening. Why didn't they just say that? That's ridiculous. <laughs> a medical term for reddening. They said, look, below the dose, there's certainly not much to worry about. That's 300 rotogens. That's what's required to give you an arrhythma. So it got to be the mindset with a whole group of people worldwide that doses like 100, 200 rads, they're not going to do anything. And besides, if you haven't seen something within a year, what are you worried about? I could show you in a paper in paper after paper from the finest institutions in this country and abroad stating quote, "If it doesn't really work in every patient, we can at least say there will be no harm unquote. two hundred to four hundred rads, and so the idea that the harm would come ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty years later simply Ne was never thought of. Hmm. Do we believe that? I don't. If they had been studying animals, they would have seen it and could have put it into pieces. This is an illustration of what I call disaster creep. Scientists and physicians never in the early part of this century never thought of the possibility that what they had to look out for was something 40 years down the line. Properly, people get pretty darn excited if the most sensitive to radiation are kitties less than a year old. At 40 years old, they don't regard themselves as pro excuse me, at 40 years old, they don't regard themselves as proper candidates to die. At 40 years, a 40 year later cancer is a serious matter. How much time have I been reading? 12 minutes. Well, we're on a new subtitle. Attitudes Towards Radiation and AEC's Biological and Medical Program. I'm going to keep going. This is Goffman again. But this, uh, but this was lost on most people who came to run the Atomic Energy Commission Biology and Medicine Program after the passage of McMahon's Atomic Energy Act. They brought the whole troop from radiology, they brought in the whole troops from radiology all over this country. These people ha all had the mindset that two to four hundred rads of x-rays or gamma rays can't hurt you. Pooh pooed it. Let me illustrate it for you. I don't know your community, but you've heard of the shoe store fluoroscope, I'm sure. Did you ever see one? Gorley. No, I haven't. Goffman. Too young. The shoe store fluoroscope. I know when I was a kid in the 30s, I visited the shoe store and got fluoroscoped. I need more water. Hold on. Well, I don't know. I'm at 13 minutes. Maybe I'll just end here and start a new video. I'll read a little bit more. We'll find out what being fluoroscope means. I think we're in for a big lesson. Did you get fluoroscoped? <laughs> I don't know. I might have gotten fluoroscoped. I mean, I was born in 55, but I wasn't really allowed to go down to the store by myself. So I don't think I did. Anyways, I'll end here, folks. Put your courage feet on. Take action. Please do call your senators, your Republican senators, and tell them to make President Bush give us better, better, better candidates. Cheers. Man, I'm grateful for water, man. I wonder how long we're going to be able to. This is the thing. We know we're drinking tritiated water no matter what, fuckers. And you know what, you guys, you're right. Uh, TJ, you made a comment about, you know, you're radiated. Yeah, we're all glowing. That's why I don't have a Geiger counter. Like, we just need to protect ourselves, eat right, have a happy attitude, and just decide and get educated and find this stuff out and find out what's happened to us. 
Because you know what? The revolution will not be televised, and neither will the harm that they're going to do us. They're not going to tell us. They're not going to admit it. But we can keep the most egregious out of office. And I, in my view, that means Trump's current cabinet picks. Put your courage behind you guys. Ciao.